Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with today's cruise news. And we got a wild pile of it for you. You got to stay to the end on this one because I'm going to tell you about some new technology in narcotics detection. The dogs may be going away replaced with insects. Yeah, but let's start off with a interesting cruise news story. There's a cruise line out there that is canceling four months worth of cruises on one of its cruise ships. Norwegian Cruise Line has announced the cancellation of several upcoming sailings on the Norwegian Epic. The affected sailings, which run from December the 1st, 2023 to April the 9th, 2024, include departures from Rome, Haifa, Trieste, and Lisbon. The cancellation affects a total of 11 sailings, ranging from 10 to 14 nights in duration and covering various Mediterranean destinations. Norwegian Cruise Line has apologized for the inconvenience caused and will provide full refunds to all impacted guests with refunds expected to be processed within 30 days. Guests who paid with a future cruise credit will have the credit returned to their loyalty account within 10 days. Additionally, the cruise line is offering a 20% discount on any European sailings until April the 30th, 2024, and an additional 10% discount as a future cruise credit for any future voyage until December the 31st, 2024. Norwegian Cruise Line has not yet announced the alternate plans for the Norwegian Epic during the cancellation period. However, the ship is scheduled to resume Mediterranean cruises from April the 19th, 2024 with a Greek Isle itinerary. From cancellations to new bookings, Holland America Line has just opened up the bookings for its 2025 Grand Voyages. The two voyages, one named Pole to Pole and the Grand World Voyage, are both scheduled to depart in January 2025. This is the first time the cruise line will be offering two simultaneous Grand Voyages lasting over 120 days. The 133-day Grand Voyage Pole to Pole will be aboard the MS Volendam, visiting five continents, while the 124-day Grand World Voyage will be on the MS Zyderdam. Both voyages will commence and conclude in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The itineraries feature several overnight calls in various cities, offering travelers unique and memorable experiences. Guests who booked the full voyage before June the 3rd, 2024 will be eligible for additional onboard credits and amenities. For the Grand Voyage, the Pole to Pole, you can get up to $8,800. And if you're going to book the Grand World Voyage, you can get $8,500 in additional onboard credits and amenities. Now let's talk about a first in the cruise industry, a first that should make environmentalists a little more happier when it comes to cruising. MSC Eurebia, a new LNG-powered cruise ship, is set to sail the industry's first net-zero greenhouse gas emissions cruise. The ship is currently under construction. It will depart from St. Nazir in France and head to Copenhagen, Denmark, for its naming ceremony. The four-day sailing aims to demonstrate the feasibility of net-zero emissions cruisings. MSC Eurebia's voyage will utilize bio-LNG with a mass balance system ensuring the use of renewable biogas. The ship's supply chain will comply with the European Union's Renewable Energy Directive, and all bio-LNG produced will be certified by the International Sustainability and Carbon Certification. The Zero Emissions Cruise is supported by Gasum, a Nordic biogas company, and will be monitored by energy efficiency specialists from MSC Cruises. And interestingly, concerns about the environment are not only shaping new ship builds, but they're also shaping whether or not cruise companies can extend their credit. The TUI Group has extended the maturity of its credit line by two years. The interest conditions of the revolving credit facility will now be linked to the group's emission reduction targets confirmed by the Science-Based Targets Initiative. TUI aims to reduce cruise emissions by 27.5% by 2030. The review and its confirmation of these targets by SBTI set new standards in the tourism sector. TUI was another cruise brand that took out massive debt during the shutdown. They still have multi-billion dollars worth of debt and it is very interesting to see the extension of that debt, their ability to pay that debt off at a later time tied to their environmental profile. Our next story sees a Princess cruise ship being disrupted by weather. Guests aboard the Sky Princess cruise ship have encountered challenges on their journey. The cruise departed from Southampton, England on May the 13th with plans to visit Norwegian and Icelandic ports before returning on May the 27th. However, 
Weather conditions, a medical emergency, and an upcoming storm have led to significant changes in the itinerary. Unpredictable weather forced the cancellation of port visits, disappointing passengers. Additionally, a medical emergency prompted a return to port, and the upcoming storm adds further complications. Guests booked on subsequent cruises may also face challenges due to unfavorable weather forecasts. Not super fond of that story, as I will be making my way to England next week to board a Princess cruise ship for a cruise around the British Isles. Hopefully the weather does not impact any of the ports. Our next cruise news story takes us across the state of Florida to Port Canaveral, where progress has been made on the new proposed cruise terminal there. Port Canaveral commissioners have chosen a site for a new terminal in their efforts to accommodate the port's recent growth. Following the pandemic, the port has experienced a surge in revenue and is now looking to optimize its layout. The CEO of the port, John Murray, expressed the positive impact of larger ships, increased ship traffic, and new brands. Last month alone, the port welcomed 600,000 cruisers, and they predict the number to reach 3 million by the end of 2023. The port currently supports 43,000 jobs and pays $2.3 billion in wages. Certainly, it's going to take a couple of years to build a new terminal but it's good to see the progress happening. We have another cruise line implementing Starlink internet. This time it is Linbad Expeditions. They will introduce SpaceX's Starlink broadband internet on its fleet by the end of the year. The cruise line aims to provide connectivity to passengers traveling to remote destinations. Three new internet packages will be offered with the higher speeds available for a fee. Normally, the internet is included on Linbad. The decision reflects the cruise industry's focus on improving onboard internet services in challenging maritime environments. The implementation of Starlink will enhance connectivity and enable faster download speeds, benefiting passengers on Linbad voyages to the off-beaten path locations such as Antarctica, the Canadian Arctic, and Alaska. Really is hard to overstate how much of a game changer Starlink internet is becoming in the cruise industry. You see most of the major cruise lines and then even some of the smaller cruise lines uh, putting faster internet on their cruise ships. Comes with a cost, certainly, but uh, the option is there for faster internet, which I think options are good. Now, quickly, I want to circle back around to a story yesterday where we were talking about drug sniffing dogs on Carnival Cruise Lines. Several folks reached out surprised by the statement that I made that there were drug sniffing dogs on board. A lot of people are accustomed to drug sniffing dogs being at the terminal, but we're surprised that the dogs might also be on a sailing. Yes, that certainly is true. I have seen pictures of drug sniffing dogs in the passageways of cruise ships going from cabin to cabin. It is not on every Carnival cruise ship. It will only be on random select. I don't think you know which one it's going to be on is the point. But yes, in addition to dogs in the terminal, there will also be dogs on some Carnival sailings. And what's wild, while I was doing the research on that Carnival story, I kind of got sidetracked. I went down a rabbit hole and started looking at alternate options for sniffing alternate to dogs. And I found two really interesting articles. Uh, the first one I won't go deep into, but the Chinese are training red squirrels to identify narcotics. And even deeper than that, there is a group of scientists that are looking at using honeybees to sniff out drugs. And you may say, well, why would you use honeybees? How could you even use honeybees? The interesting thing is there is a concern that between dogs and humans, that the dogs would so much want to please their human handlers that the dogs may want to falsely detect in order to gain favor with their handlers. Uh, they want to be good dogs. Reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. They want to be good dogs. Another challenge with the dogs is their viability and cost. It was noted in the article that in many states where marijuana has been legalized, of course, the dogs are no longer needed, and that was a big expense to have the dogs trained up, where essentially you can train honeybees for very little cost. Now, it's still in the infancy of its research. Again, I'm not sure how you would wrangle honeybees to do this activity, but they are being trained to detect and to recognize different substances from caffeine to narcotics. It's a, it's a wild thing. Uh, but yeah, maybe sometime in the future, uh, you'll have to go through a swarm of honeybees at your embarkation to see uh, whether or not 
whether or not you got the uh, wacky tobacco on you. Man, that was a honeycomb full of cruise news today. I am going to go live tonight answering your cruise questions, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you're looking for the link for that. If you enjoyed the show, please show your support by hitting the like button. Make sure you check out this video next. Five people who should not cruise on Carnival. Have you seen that one? This is Tony for La Lido Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.